please put your hands together as I invite architect Rahul Shankwalkar to the session. And he is from Hirsch Bedner Associates, Singapore. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for architect Rahul. As it's his time for a speaker session. And we're going to have some interesting insights coming in from architect Rahul. Good evening, everyone. So when I was given these list of topics to talk about, I picked the most simple. That's my nature. I like to go for anything simple and easy. And I picked up what did design teach me. Um, but when I got down to writing it, I pretty much spent all of last night trying to write this. And God, design has taught me a lot. But trying to squeeze that into a 20-minute conversation is close to impossible. So I thought I'll start with a little story. So I joined, um, I did my architecture in Goa. And when we got to second year, finishing the first year, all fun and games, one of our teachers decided it's time to teach these kids what concept means in, in architecture. Well, we all knew the word concept, but none of us knew what it means, concept means in architecture, what places it has in design, nothing. So she says, kids, I'll make this very simple for you. Imagine a form you like, a shape you like, dog, I'm proud of myself because I felt two decades later my designs were way ahead of its time. So the learning I had from that class was, was quite profound to this date. I think I still remain damaged from the education I had that year. Um, and I also still don't know what concept means in architecture. And God forbid if someone asks me, dude, what's your concept for this design? I freeze over. I don't know what a concept is. But the good news is that never stopped me from being an architect. And through time, I've evolved my own processes of understanding how I should do things. And Sometimes it feels very random and, and offbeat, but it works perfectly fine for me. So like I was saying earlier, design has taught me a lot of things. And um, four of those I'd like to talk about today. That it's important to embrace stories and experiences. And I think we've all grown up with stories, and India is a land of stories. Uh, they convey and embody emotions, uh, they are um, means of sharing knowledge, it's a means of connecting, it's a means of just talking to each other through stories. Uh, I use stories to guide my internal creative process and curate experiences in my designs. A couple of years back, we were asked to design um, one of my first private island resorts in the Maldives. And as I sat on my drawing board, I remember thinking, telling myself a story as I was walking through this in my mind. It all felt real to me. It felt real in the imagined deep turquoise colors of the water, what it would feel like walking on um, you know, salvaged wood on the, uh, on the beach. And, and I basically designed the space as my dream vacation. I wasn't thinking about anyone else. This was for me. Um, <clears throat> the design allowed for a very seamless connection between inside and outside. I know we all talk about this inside and outside connection, but the connection to the vast ocean um, also allowed for a sense of privacy and a sense of seclusion for the occupants. The bathroom took, took prominence uh, with their proximity to the ocean. Or the deck from which you could just jump, casually jump into the water. So the architecture of, or the design almost became that of non-architecture, so to speak. It wasn't heroic in any way, any more than it was about a heroic experience, if you would say that. Very private, very sensual bathrooms, uh, very uh, connected to uh, whatever was happening outside. Uh, the beds where you woke up, you look straight out into the, um, into the ocean. That brings me to my second point. I believe that, or at least for me, I believe that creativity is born out of constraints. And constraints are very important for, for creative fertility to, to flourish. 
In 98, I moved to Australia to study, and as you can imagine, a very poor student. And the only food that I could afford at that time was dal and rice, right? Um, but in time, I became creative with my cooking purely because of this financial constraint I had. It was dal and rice to start with. Um, and I still cook. I still cook and I cook with very minimal materials and, and to a great extent the way I approach my cooking also informs the way I design, the way I compose things. And sorry, I apply this approach to designing. This is one of our projects uh, in Pune. I like to work with a very simple palette of materials, often one, two, three, four maybe at the most, but not more than them. I thrive in challenges and I believe that complex problems often have very creative solutions. So a few years back, we were asked to um, design a clubhouse in a golf estate in a very upmarket neighborhood just outside Pune. And the spa happened to be allocated in the basement. And everything very complicated in the basement. The columns went from anywhere to anywhere. The beams were anywhere. There was no rectilinear thinking, although my images here look very rectilinear. But there was very little opportunity to align the spaces in a very conventional way of, of lines or of forms. And we spent quite a lot of time trying to make rectilinear sense out of this, but it just wouldn't work. Not moving. Ah. The asymmetry had to be embraced and celebrated in a very fluid form. So on the right hand side, there was a weird shaped column with a capital on the top. But I think that was an opportunity to embrace that in a way that you express the transfer of load from a capital down into the floor in a very, very poetic manner, so to speak. Um, sorry. Sorry, technical problem. OK. So that's the treatment room. Again, like I said, a very controlled palette of materials. I don't know where I was, so I'm just going to jump straight into uh, point number three. Embodiment. We good? I believe creativity grows out of very deep and complicated places within us, and sometimes very happy places too. I've long made truce with the fact that I'm not a particularly great person who can do hand-drawn 3D sketches. And neither am I technologically savvy, and I struggled with that for a very long time. So over time, I've developed mechanisms to, have, to make the building brick by brick in the vast virtual expanses of my mind. And at any given point in time, the beauty of that is I can either be in the building or I can be out of the building. But in, I can embody those spaces in the designs that I'm trying to create. And through the process, I try to experience what I would like the end users to experience. These are some of my really random sketches. My hand, then, is the link between experience and imagination. A line I draw is no longer just a line, but it's, um, it's an object. It's a bridge that connects the virtual to the reality in my mind, and they're both in my mind at that stage. I sketch details of one is to one. Um, on very large pieces of paper to communicate my ideas, but more importantly, to physically relate the space on paper of what is in my mind and never forgetting that I can't actually do a 3D sketch. And last of which, and most importantly, I think empathy. Empathy is very critical to design because it requires to immerse yourself in a context by directly experiencing the lives and environments of the people you are seeking to better understand. 
and to uncover their needs. Knowing what you're solving for is as important as how you're going to solve them. Um, when we designed the Port Moziris, which is um, a Marriott brand and India's first Hyatt Centric in Bangalore, they both opened over the last year or so, we spent a significant amount of time in the neighborhoods, talked to people, ate with them, laughed with them, sometimes drank with them, bought products they had to sell. Um, the project wasn't a Disneyfication of what we saw and try and bring it back into the hotel, but it was making a place in itself. By immersing ourselves in the neighborhood, we created a hotel with a sense of place and identity. I'm just very quickly going to run you through some of the images. So this is um, stenciled artwork on, um, on the bed back, just painted by hand. Or So there is a sense of, um, of imperfection in in what we're doing, and, and they revolve around us, um, a little girl, Leela. So do the locally sourced fabrics we use. That's the Hyatt Centric in Bangalore, um, just hand painted over subway tiles, as we call them. Recycled books, and interestingly, many of these books we bought from the households, and many of them have uh, little notes on the pages. Like I was saying, design has taught me a lot. While the process remains a constant, its application is something that constant, continuously changes and evolves. Um, and that brings me to my end. Thank you.